Hello and welcome once again to our SUM TV Sabbath School. My name is C.A. Murray, and it is my privilege and pleasure to welcome you to our time of study together. This is a, a new quarter. Uh, I often wonder, someone asked me the other day, how long after New Year's do you stop saying, do you start saying Happy New Year, or do you stop saying Happy New Year? <laughs> So I don't know how long after the new quarter we stopped saying this is a new quarter, but <laughs> this is week number two. Right. So it's a new quarter still. Right. And we are studying about the great controversy. And um, really, we're looking at very pragmatic issues uh, that revolve around the great controversy, sort of kitchen table issues mm. that, that affect our, our very lives. Mm -hmm. I've got two good-looking young men with me, uh, <laughs> studying the Word of God. Pastor David Salazar to my left. Pastor, it's always good to have you here. Thank you, Pastor Murray. It's a blessing to be in this panel with you and also with Pastor Ruth. Yeah, what a blessing to Yeah, have. a relatively new face, good-looking young guy. <laughs> right. Uh, Pastor Diego Arutia. Pastor, introduce yourself and tell us where you are serving the Lord. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for the invitation. It's, it's an honor. And uh, just, I'm from Canada, born and raised, moved here in 2021. And I'm currently serving at the Fresno Sunnyside Church as a youth pastor. So my focus is the young people. So I'm hoping that a young person will watch this Amen. and everything some TV does and that they can see the beauty and the character of Jesus through amen. this quarter. Amen, amen. and amen. Hmm. Uh, good to get some uh, young blood in here with the, praise the, Lord. With the old hand. So praise <laughs> the Lord. Pastor, good to have you here. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, Pastor David, if you would have our prayer and then Pastor Ruchi, if you would read our uh, memory text, yep. then we'll launch out into our lesson. Absolutely. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you at this hour, we thank you once again for being with us and for giving us the light of your word, for letting us understand these beautiful uh, examples of how you deal with the issues in this world. I want to ask you that you will send your Holy Spirit to mm. teach us into and guide us into all truth. Amen. Be with us. Allow us to speak not our own thoughts or our own words, but mm. your words. Amen. So that people may be drawn closer to you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our memory text is Isaiah, Isaiah 41, and that's verse 10. It reads, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. All right, before we even get into the lesson, gentlemen, give me some thought of what that text says to you. Uh, Pastor, you want to you take a stab at it? Absolutely. You know, what caught my attention was uh, lesson two, if you, if you look at your quarterly, it says the central issue. And just to make it very simple, you know, it's the issue that's central. Uh, and love or selfishness. Mm -hmm. And what I get from this text is that Jesus promises not only to be with us, but to strengthen us and to help us. And there's nothing more unselfish than to help someone. Mm -hmm. And so immediately, I think this text is, uh, it's appropriate for the context of this. And it just rem it reminds us that God is always with us. Amen, mm -hmm. amen. Mm -hmm. I, I will also add to add to that, thought, the fact that God is telling us, you know, we have things to fear in this world mm -hmm. if we are without him. You will be afraid. You will have these experiences. But when he comes to you, he says, fear not. He invites us to understand that as long as we trust and have a relationship with him, yeah. we can move apart or, or step up from that fear experience, from that being afraid of being uncertain of things happening we can trust him and he says, I will hold you, I will uphold you with my right hand. So I feel that this is a promise that we can have peace, we can have uh, comfort, yeah. we can escape the fear in this world as long as we are with Christ. And so, yeah, it is really beautiful that we can trust in him. Well said, both of you. Um, years ago, I was pastoring a lady whose husband had passed. Hmm? She had children scattered over the country, and she didn't know where to live or where to go. She said, I'm afraid all of the time. Um, I pastored all of my ministry in New York City. There's a, a, a thing that happens when you knock on an apartment door in New York City. It usually takes them about five minutes to open the <laughs> yes, door. Yes, that's right. Because they've got so many <laughs> locks on the door that it take, you hear this click, bang, ching, boom, boom, because they're taking off right. all these locks. Right. And they have a thing I've never seen before. They have this pole 
that sticks in the floor right. and then sort of butts up against the door. Yes. And it takes a little work to get that thing out of the door. So I, I became accustomed to that as I visited my members. But she said, I don't know where to go. She said, I don't like living in the city by myself. I, I fear all the time. Mm. I don't go out at night because it's dark and I don't want to do that. I don't go out during the day because there's so many people moving around and I'm just, I don't want to be around people. Wow. <clears throat> I don't want to live in a country because you're out there by yourself. Something could happen. You die. No one ever knows. You know, you, you, I don't want to live in a city because it's just too crowded. Yeah. I don't take the subway. I don't drive. You know, so she's in fear all, all the time. The time. Wow. And that is a lot of many, not only city dwellers, but as, as, as we come closer to the end of time and we see more carnage in the world, people are afraid, Pastor. They're just, yeah. they're scared yes. all the time. And so she ended up moving in with one of her daughters, but she wasn't happy there. So she came back to the city about three years later uh, because we're, we're afraid. So when you see fear not, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very, very important that's because that's, that's the lot of human beings in these end times. We are afraid yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. Fear not, for I am with you is a great and powerful promise Amen. From, from the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's one of those uh, texts that have universal application. True. You right. know, that no, no mm -hmm. matter what time you've lived in human history, God says, fear not, mm -hmm. and until now, until the very end. And Absolutely. so it's one of those verses that it's always appropriate. Yes, to amen. Claim. Yes, yes. Amen. God says he will uphold us with his righteous right hand. Mm -hmm. um, before we leave this, this little Sabbath afternoon uh, part of the lesson, at the very bottom it says, Satan has this twofold strategy, to deceive mm -hmm. and destroy. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, gentlemen, in these last days, he hasn't really changed his tactic. One, there's no need to because they're still working. Yeah, you absolutely. know, if, if it's working, don't don't change. Don't change but he he persecutes. Then if, if he can't get you through persecution, then he sort of co-ops you, just brings you in, you know, and sort of waters you down uh, kind of thing. And he's still using that uh, in these last these last days. Yeah, absolutely. The concept of deception, it's to take you by your own choice, if you will, in a direction to destroy you. At the end of the day, it comes down to that. You know, mm -hmm. Satan, I just mentioned, he has a tactic to deceive you and destroy you. Sometimes destruction comes through wars, through mm -hmm. persecution, through, mm -hmm. you know, famine, all these other things. But at the same time, the, the element is take you away from Christ, take mm -hmm. you away from the truth and make you believe a lie and destroy you in that lie. Yeah, yeah. the ultimate goal is to destroy you, mm -hmm. whether through deception or persecution, However, he wants your destruction, and he'll use any means uh, to accomplish that end. Absolutely, and you know one of the one of the things that is dangerous about about deception is that no one actually thinks they are deceived. <laughs> right. Well done. Well right? said. Right. Yeah. Like no one walks around saying I'm deceived. Right. And so it's a little bit like like asleep. Mm -hmm. Right. You mm -hmm. didn't know you were asleep until you woken up. Yeah. And so it, it, it's, it's sometimes I think Satan will not destroy you to keep you deceived mm -hmm. because in deception, you can cause others exactly. to be more deceived. That's right. And so this is, it's really a spiritual a pill that can only waken us from this, which is Jesus. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, especially for the young people, uh, it's, it's not easy being young today, mm -hmm. right? And many distractions and these avenues of distraction to lead to, deception, but there's there's hope, which Amen. we will yeah. see throughout this. You know, I, I like this. I, I like this having this young, younger <laughs> aspect. Praise uh, the Lord, right? Mindset. Yeah, we're going to keep you around. <laughs> uh, because, um, you know, we need that perspective because it's, you know, I wouldn't mind knocking off a few years. I wouldn't mind being maybe 10 years <laughs> Me too. younger, but I would not want to be your age. <laughs> I don't, it's tough being a young, but you've got two daughters. Yes, you know, it's rough. Uh, if it, and, and you're praying for them now. Yes. But you're you're getting ready to get into the age when you're really going to have to start praying because <laughs> you've you got attractive young ladies, you know, and they're outgoing. Uh, so yeah. you're going to have to do a lot of praying, you know. Amen. So Do so that. it's it's tough, and it is true. It is yeah. tough being a young person yeah. in this age. That's true. There are more ways to get sick, more ways to get injured, and more mm. ways to die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we, we've got to commend them to the Lord. So I'm glad you're here, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, it's good we, to be here. To keep you around. <laughs> you <know. laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, I love this. Let's go into Sunday. All right. Talking about a broken-hearted Savior. Mm. Um, Christ sitting on the Mount of Olives. He is looking at the city, 
He has a vision of the world and things are happening to, to him and are about to happen to him. Uh, he came to his own and his own received him not. Uh, Jesus did everything, I'm reading at the top of the lesson, he could to save his people from the coming destruction of their beloved city. But he's looking not only at the city, he's looking down to the end of time. Right. And he sees a people who are not ready for his coming. Yeah. And this is this is response. Any thoughts on this, Pastor or Pastor? Uh, well, let me tell you, these verses that we find um, continuing with this concept of Jesus looking at the city mm. and... Well, in a sense, really, he starts even weeping for the city. Mm -hmm. He's heartbroken because he sees and foretells of the destruction that will come upon the city. And we know from, of course, history, and including spirit prophecy, what happened in the destruction of Jerusalem, how terrible it was, yeah. how much yeah. uh, suffering. It, it was you know, inhuman what happened to those people. And Christ is seeing this in their experience, he's seen uh, foreseeing the situation, he's seen the, the, the rejection that they had on him. And this is why that city was gonna be destroyed because they chose to mm -hmm. believe a lie and reject the truth, which was Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. And so as he's heartbroken, he's in a sense also appealing to them to realize, look, the only way to escape destruction, the only way to escape the certain dis you know, doom of the city is to be drawn to him. I like the words in uh, John 540, actually, that Christ says to them, notice, and ye will not come to me that ye may have life. Mm. See, Christ was trying to tell them that if they were to accept him, they will have life, yeah. which at the end of the day is what everybody searches, yeah. wants. Young people, old, we all want to have life and have a good life. Christ is the only answer to that. Mm -hmm. But through experience and through the past, we see that those that reject Christ and re reject his teachings, what he said to do, eventually are deceived into destruction and the destruction of them was not pretty. So I think that, you know, to me, it speaks to, of, of us today, the opportunity that we have to avoid being destroyed because mm -hmm. the end of the world is certainly coming. You know, whether or not we have heard it for many years or we don't really want to believe it or see it, but it is happening, it will happen. And Christ is saying, the only way to avoid being part of the destruction is to know me now, to come right. to me today. Amen. Right. Amen. It's interesting you said that, you know, I, I, I was speaking to someone, uh, yeah. an individual, and they were kind of complaining that it seems like Jesus is late. Yeah. Right. And they, you know, they said, you know, they've been saying uh, for, for thousands of years, Jesus is coming soon. And I said, well, have you lived through those thousands of years? <laughs> yeah. Because you've only lived 40 or plus years. Right. Right. So our time is nothing right. compared to how much this message has been mm -hmm. preached and proclaimed. But I want to highlight something here, uh, if you would, just uh, Matthew 23 and verse 37. Uh, it says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, mm. the one who kills the prophets mm. and stoned those who are sent to her. And here it is. How often I wanted to gather your mm -hmm. children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Yeah. And this verse is so powerful because it simply tells us this is the heart of God, mm -hmm. that his desire is to gather mm -hmm. everyone, mm -hmm. but they're not willing. They're not and willing. so if you gather someone who's not willing, that's not love. No, that would be force. That was force. Right. So we're, we're really seeing, uh, and, and this is, I don't want to, get a little Spoiler. ahead of myself, <laughs> yeah. but this is where, where we're heading at, right, really, right. the character and the heart of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well Amen. said. Um, just a little reading. Ellen White says, the sin of the world today is the sin that brought destruction upon Israel. Ingratitude to God. I ran wow. across this text, many, uh, mm -hmm. this, this reading many, many years ago and did some study. You know, Ellen White says that there are some who are going to miss out on heaven because of their ingratitude. Yeah. Uh, she talks about I think the term is stupid ingratitude, you know, um, uh, yeah. that God does so much for them, yeah. with them, to them, through them, and there's no gratitude. You're always looking over your shoulder at somebody else. Yeah. And, well, they got that. I don't, and, and, which is, as we discovered last week, what, what started the whole sin problem in the very beginning. Yeah. Right. You know, Satan's got a lot of privileges. He's the, for want of a better term, top angel, yeah. and yet he wants more. Yeah. You know, you're not satisfied with that. Ingratitude. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you cannot be a happy Christian 
unless you are grateful for what you have. Mm. And then the question would come, why would God give you more if you're not thanking him for what, for you, what have? you have? Amen. Yeah. You know, he's kind of heaping stones upon, stones upon your, your head if he gives you more and you're in gratitude, you're right. un ungrateful. So um, in gratitude to God, the neglect of opportunities and blessings, the selfish appropriation of God's gifts, these are comprised in the sin that brought wrath upon Israel. They are bringing ruin to the world today. Mm. That's a heavy mm. statement. A heavy statement. <laughs> and Pastor, you know, this concept of ingratitude, it's sadly being so common today among God's people. Mm -hmm. We know we are so quick to ask and ask and ask, but so, you know, slow to thank, give right. thanks to the Lord. Mm. Like if you know, if you know, our prayers, our petitions are usually asking for so much and thanking for so little. It's, it's, a, it's a problem that we have that can easily take us into a doubt of God, into mm. when we're going through really good trials or difficulties or things don't seem to go our way, we start doubting if the Lord really is there with us. Mm. But if we have developed a relationship of trust and gratitude to the Lord, I believe that even in those darker times, we could have a heart of thanksgiving, a heart of trust and assurance that God is indeed with us. So I think it's, a, it's an interesting call for us to start developing this gratitude to the Lord and having more of a thankful right. and mm -hmm. heart, uh, heart in our hearts. You know, yeah, and, and I think, you know, when we, when we show this kind of selfishness, and, and this is the, 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 the theme of Sunday, mm -hmm. it breaks his heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And sometimes we kind of think, you know, he's angry and but he, he's broken hearted. Right. Because thing. God loves everyone, but not everyone loves God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and not everyone wants to do the will of God while you're claiming to love God. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, this really just from the great controversy, just when when uh, Jesus is looking at uh, the temple. Right. Just this small, small sentence. Uh, Ellen White writes, his tears were not for himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And that, that was just powerful because, you know, he's not crying for himself. He's crying for them, for them. That's the love of God. And, yeah. and you know, like you said, when you think about what's going to happen to this city, yeah. he's he's broken hearted. He, yeah. you know, he's he's dying inside for what's going to happen. And and even in the going to the cross as he was going to Calvary. Right. Remember when he saw the woman weeping for him, mm. he says, you know, don't weep for me, weep right. for your children. Because he saw that, that you know, even in that moment of right. his excruciating pain and agony, he, his heart was moved by compassion to these young women who were crying out of, you know, compassion for his condition. But he said, look, what's happening to your children, to your grandchildren is going to be worse right. because of rejecting of me. Yeah. So he's, you know, he, this is how much of a loving Savior we have. And, and, and I think that if we were to see the closing scenes of this earth's history, Christ is also right now weeping for us, mm -hmm. crying for, God, for the people that they don't want to be gathered, as you mentioned, Pastor, you know, to yeah. him. So. A, a good friend of mine who, who's gone to his rest now, Pastor C.D. Brooks, mm -hmm. once said, mm -hmm. um, people bring two implements, two garden implements to church. He said they bring a shovel and a rake. <laughs> and when most people are, are listening to a sermon and a pastor is sort of getting on a congregation, they're using the shovel. They're saying, Amen, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. You know, they're, they're shoveling it to the next person. Yeah, right. They're right. shoveling it. But they ought to be using a rake mm. and bringing it to themselves mm. and raking it to themselves. Right. Um, uh, Ellen White says in the book Evangelism, sometimes I get so burdened with the plight of lost souls mm. that I could just die. Wow. <laughs> That's a powerful statement. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I've, I've done a number of evangelistic meetings over the years, got two more coming up this year, but I don't know if I've ever had the burden where I would just die. Yeah. You know, I've never, I've never had that strong a burden. So I've got to question myself, is my burden strong enough? Hmm. Uh, do I love souls strong enough as Christ did? When Christ sat on that hill looking over the temple, beautiful as it was, he knew that in a few years that was going to be rubble. Yeah. Uh, and that in a few weeks, it wasn't going to be of any use spiritually anymore. Right. Uh, and that the city is going to be gone. And then he looks down to the end of time, he sees you and I here and thousands of people, and he knows that many, many are going to be ready, but a whole lot of people are not going to be ready. 
Yeah. That's that, that, that's that's right. that's something to cry over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is. Amen. Hmm. Before we leave Sunday, we we got to talk a little bit about the destruction of Jerusalem, which Christ uh, portended, and uh, the Roman general coming in and then retreating and coming back. And Ellen lets us know that no Christians, nobody who followed the Lord, right. were lost. So that gives us some encouragement that we have to follow the Lord even in the smallest things yeah. if we're going to be uh, saved and ultimately do His will. What say you gentlemen on that? I think, Pastor, that it's, like you said, it's so important to see that Christ gave, you know, prophetic clarity and understanding for those that were searching and looking to His scriptures and His words that they could escape such a destruction, such a, you know, horrible experience. The Lord made a miraculous way for them to escape unhurt yeah. from the city, but they had to be willing to, first of all, listen to the Word of God and be uh, ready and not delay their decision. Mm -hmm. You know, because we know that from history, the, the Roman armies, as you mentioned, came to Jerusalem under, uh, I think it was uh, Gallius, and he surrounded the city, and they were about to give up. All of a sudden, they are withdrawn, you know, and immediately those that were faithful said, this is a prophecy, the moment that we were waiting for, we got to leave right now. Mm -hmm. Now, if they were persuaded to stay, let's say, or, or they were saying, oh, you know, maybe we, you know, things are gonna be okay. Right. They would have been destroyed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But no faithful Christian, you know, remained. We know that somebody did stay and started prophesying, you know, we're gonna be doomed, destroyed, whatever, but he stayed there mm -hmm. and he was destroyed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so sadly he's not saved. Uh, and so we have to be careful that we don't end up in that situation. Yeah. We know the Lord's coming and we may say, oh, I've heard it so many times. And then we see evidences in the experience of the world. We are seeing how quickly things can change. Right. And if we're not ready to say, you know what? I need to follow the Lord to, as you mentioned, the small things. I myself may become deceived and be part of the destruction that I'm so much preaching against, you know? Right. So. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when the Bible says without faith, yes. it's impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in, the, in the context for the Jewish nation to think the temple will be destroyed. Right. That's that's absurd. Absurd, yeah. Right, but given given give following the instructions of the warning was an act of faith, because the temple was not yet destroyed, mm -hmm. but yet they heard that it will be, mm. and so that that causes us in 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 kind of a practical sense that when we hear the word preached, Amen. and we feel that conviction that we feel we have to act upon it mm. because we don't know what could happen that night. Yes. We don't know what could happen tomorrow. And this, and uh, as the Bible says, choose this day, right? Whom Amen. you serve. Amen. You know, the Bible says uh, the Roman legions left and the Jews pursued them and picked off a few. You know, yeah. they, they, yeah. they had some su success. Right. So the Nermans are thinking, <laughs> God is with us. We got this, yeah. right. <laughs> um, but they didn't know that, that was, while that was happening, those who are listening were fleeing, right. you know. Um, Ellen White says in, in, in Great Contrast, mm. you brought that with you. You know, I've read that maybe five times. Mm. The first time I read it, I had to wade my, I just, you know, <laughs> I, I just had to work through it. I wasn't, right. it just wasn't my favorite book. But as I got older and more mature in the Lord, the book began to open up to me. Yeah. So that the last two times my wife and I read it together, it really, it, it just was a fabulous, Absolutely. fabulous, fabulous yeah. book. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the early chapters, when it talks about the destruction of Jerusalem, those soldiers came in rabid. You know, they were mad, they were angry, they were looking for gold. Um, they didn't care about men, women, children, or anybody. Um, they were just, just trying to find what they could, and they were angry against the Jews for, you know, the, the rebellion never stopped and they, they really wanted to put this city down and put these people down. It led me into some, some readings and there's a little start here at the end where it says, Satan delights in war because it, it serves the worst passions of the human heart. Yeah. <laughs> people do things in war that they wouldn't do right. in peacetime Absolutely. because a spirit comes over them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Down through the centuries, it has been his purpose to deceive and destroy and then blame his evil actions mm. on God. She mm. talks about uh, the Civil War in particular. She says, it suits his satanic majesty well 
to see slaughter and carnage upon the earth. He loves to see poor soldiers mowed down like grass. Wow. So he's, he's, he's impressed to see men and women destroyed and war excites those passions. So that's what was aroused at, in 70 AD when, when Jerusalem was attacked. They weren't thinking about peace. They weren't thinking about safety. They weren't thinking about any kind of rules of engagement. They just went in there to kill. And of course, that's what Satan wants, to see men and women destroying other men and women. Hmm. And the scenes of that, you know, savage attack, it, sadly, it has happened again through history. Yeah. You know, every war, as you mentioned, Pastor, you know, wakes up the worst type of passions of humankind. Mm -hmm. And even the most recent wars, we have heard countless reports mm. of women, children being abused, destroyed, killed in ways that are humane. So we know that wars are horrible and the enemy delights in that carnage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The enemy is not gonna change in the future. It's gonna get worse. And we have to, that's why the Lord gives us this knowledge of the truth to not only be a light and to know what is gonna happen, but to be able to have a escape from that experience. And I believe that, you know, this is a lesson to us that as long as we remain faithful to the Lord, we will be able to, you know, not see these horrendous things happening to our loved ones. Sometimes the Lord will put them to sleep even, you know, mm -hmm. you know, get them to rest. So God knows, and he's trying to prepare people today to face these horrible situations in the world future, but with the trust and the conviction that God will be the protector and can save them as he saved people in the past. Amen and mm -hmm. amen. Uh, Pastor David, if you, would, if you would get for me Psalms 46.1. Absolutely. And Pastor Diego, if you would get for me Isaiah 41.10. Absolutely. Isaiah 41.10. Isaiah 41.10. <laughs> All right, so Psalms 46.1, it says, <clears throat> God is a refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Hmm. That's a powerful verse that speaks to us, I believe, in, in how, you know, the Lord is our strength. Mm -hmm. He's our refuge and the very present help in time of trouble. Like he is the only one that can help us and for sure be a refuge and security. When I, when I see present, when I hear the word present, I think of a God who is saying, I'm not, I'm not gonna put you on hold till tomorrow. Mm. I'm, I'm going to be there right now. Amen. You know, you're, in, Amen. You're, in, you're in trouble right now. I need to be with you yes. right now. Amen. You know, tomorrow's not going to help. Yeah. I need to be with you right now. And, and, and you know, when you're, when you're in trouble and things are happening and you call upon God, you want him right now. You know, yes. you don't, don't, don't put me on hold. Don't put me on a back burner. Take care of it now. You Amen. Know? Uh, Amen. So the uh, present is very, very important in our lives, in, in, in the Christian life, particularly if we're in a bad situation and we need deliverance from the Lord. Amen. Pastor 41.10 of Isaiah. Absolutely, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Amen. What does that Amen. say to you, Pastor? Amen, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, there's, as again, I'm gonna keep appealing to the to the young people. Amen. <laughs> All right. <Absolutely. laughs> I think uh, that sense of fear comes in many ways. Uh, there's many ways that we can experience uh, a fear. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think ultimately we see, for example, in the, in the destruction of Jerusalem, uh, that even those that may have been saved may have still felt a little fear. It's possible. I'm not sure. But as, as humans, we often feel that. Yes. But to claim to the promises of Jesus in the present time mm -hmm. and to see him work live. You know, sometimes we read the Bible and we think, wow, God was so great Right. in the past. He parted the Red Sea. You know, he did all these stuff. But how many of us believe that he can do something like that today? Mm -hmm. And many of us, we have that fear. Right, not just a scared fear, but a fear to even pray for someone to be healed right now, and we don't pray because we we have a fear mm. that it will not happen. Yeah, and so God wants us to come to Him with love and to believe, Amen, with faith that He is able to 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 sustain us, to strengthen us, and to uphold us with His righteous right hand Amen. because mm -hmm. He doesn't lie. Amen. Amen to that. We really have to trust him and we cannot trace him. Um, Pastor, can you get uh, Hebrews 
1135 to 38 for me? Absolutely. Please? This is a passage that sort of speaks to us uh, of what happened in the past, and I think we'll repeat it in the future. Look what it says. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yeah, more over of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were saw, sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, and of whom the world was not worthy. They wander in deserts and in mountains and in the dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Uh, that's, uh, well, I actually read the 39. But these verses are really speaking to us in the sense that many times people in the past were not always delivered, mm. you know, from physical destruction, from physical yeah. pain. Some were cruelly, you know, tortured. Some were mocked, were put in prison, in bonds. They were stoned. Some were son asunder. It's only, I think in prophet Isaiah was, you know, yeah. cut in half. Yeah. So we know that there's a lot of people, martyrs throughout history mm -hmm. that were killed in a terrific way, put in the fire, you know, yeah. and so what, and many things of, of that nature. Nevertheless, the Bible speaks to us that these people, all of them, in spite of their torture, they chose to remain faithful to the Lord and mm -hmm. to trust the Lord because they expected a better resurrection. Mm -hmm. So I think that in, in, in a sense, it also speaks to us that maybe, you know, there's a possibility and God knows that those that can remain faithful, the Lord will allow them to face certain difficulties, even death in a, in a, in a way like that. But, you know, the Lord, will be with us. Mm -hmm. And those that die this way are not forgotten by the Lord yeah. and they will be resurrected and they will have victory as, as he promised. So Pastor Diego, I'm saying if you're suffering, that means the Lord is not with you. <laughs> is, is that correct? <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and you know, this is why I love this theme yes. of the great controversy right. and the book. Yeah, because although there is no perfect answer to human suffering mm -hmm. in the present time, yes. the great controversy really tells us not only what's happening in the world, but what's happening yes. that we can't see. Amen. Correct. And it's not just about what is happening as well, but it's about how God is, how God's character is and his heart while these mm -hmm. things are happening. Mm -hmm. And so we see a compassionate God, a compassionate Jesus. Just to, uh, when I was in high school, I went to a public school. I never went to any Seventh-day Adventist school. And I remember uh, there were certain Christians when I was in high school that were trying to evangelize to me. And uh, the stuff they would try to say would just shock me. Yeah. Uh, but the issue uh, was always the issue of hell, mm. Mm. right? And I was trying to get them to justify, you know, eternal hell. Right. Right. With finite creatures. And and so when you know, when you discover Adventism, it becomes beautiful. Yes. Because we don't see a, a tyrannical God who delights in, in human suffering. We see a, a God who sent Jesus and suffered mm. and feels the compassion and pain that we go through throughout the ages until he comes back and mm. destroys sin for Amen. eternity. So it's 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 a difficult question to ask, but I think the looking at Jesus and how he lived and his character and how he will come back to to execute uh, justice mm -hmm. is is the answer to that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. God, is, God is with God is with those who are suffering. I appreciate that. So suffering, Pastor David, is no commentary on God's love for you. Mm -hmm. Just because you're under right. gun doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. In fact, it may be just the opposite. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And I think that, you know, it, it's, it's something that like, as, as you both are mentioning, you know, we got to keep in mind, and this is why the Lord revealed to us the great controversy, revealed yeah. to us the prophecy, mm -hmm. because he tells you and he's assuring us that in spite of what we may go through right now, you know, his grace is sufficient to sustain us through any trial, through any difficulty, 
as hard as it can become, you know, if whether you are persecuted, put in the lion's den or, right. you know, placed in, in the fire, if the Lord allows us to even die or experience this pain, one thing is having the experience with him and another thing is not having him with us. Those people, if you, if you remember, a lot of the stories tell us that a lot of the martyrs were dying with singing with praises to the right. Lord. Yeah. How is that possible? If you yeah. are dying you Absolutely. know, in pain, but this is the power of God, yeah. yes. that only God can allow the moments of pain to be, I don't know, uh, put in sort of a pause, if you will, so that you can actually delight in the Lord and know that He is with you in spite of that experience. Right. This is not something we can explain, it's not right. humanly possible, but the truth is that God makes a difference. Right. Without Him, that horrible pain experience is gonna be terrible. Yeah. But with him, it will be an experience of victory. Right. And, you know, I'm reminded of Daniel 3. Yes. You know, when you, when you think of that story, if those three boys yeah. did not go in the furnace, the fourth man who was in there would have never been known yes. mm -hmm. to Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so it's in trials. It's yes. in pain. Mm -hmm. that many others will see God. Amen. Yeah. And glorify God. Yeah. Amen. The testimony comes out of the trial. Right. No trial, no testimony. Yeah. Exactly. You've you, you yeah. got to have the trial right. mm -hmm. to justify the testimony. Amen. Um, a little reading here. If the saints of the Old Testament bore so bright a testimony of loyalty, should not those upon whom is shining the accumulated light of centuries, that's us, bear a still more signal witness to the power of truth. So we've got their witness plus our own. Mm -hmm. So we should, we should stand even more firm and fervently because we've got this history behind us. Absolutely. That lets us know that God is real and God is faithful. Amen. That's true. Amen to that, Pastor, yes. All right, let's look at Tuesday. Faithful amid persecution. We sort of, mm -hmm. of, of lipped over into this. Through the centuries of Christianity, the Christian church grew rapidly despite imprisonment, torture, and persecution. Faithful believers, totally committed to Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit, proclaimed his word with power. Lives were changed and tens of thousands were converted. Amen. I think it is this standing in the face of trial that is most impressive to those who do not know the Lord. Absolutely. How can they do this? How can they stand like this? How can they go through all of this and still uh, be faithful to God? Mm. That is a powerful, powerful mm. witness. Uh, any thoughts? Uh, well, I you know, I think that briefly, just to say, you know, this concept that you're mentioning, Pastor, it is so much easier to speak of Christ mm. and about his love than it is to live, <laughs> you know, Christ, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Very true. And so... What I mean by that, it's how do you really know if you have Christ? Right. If your life is doing well, if you have no, nothing wrong with you, it's easy to speak God about. God is good. Yeah, it's God is good, you know? <laughs> but right. when you are facing persecution as they were facing, mm -hmm. when the, you know, the wrath of the, not only the Jewish persecution they had from the Jewish leaders, but eventually the Romans themselves, you know, they persecuted the saints, the, the Christians. Yeah. So, you know, they had all this experiences of persecution, but for the gospel, it became much more powerful. Yeah. And it became something that the blood became a seed, you know, of the, the blood of the martyrs became seed of the gospel and it spread even farther and more stronger because as you mentioned, by giving that example, the, of suffering, you're actually giving the testimony of who yeah. Jesus is. Yes. Right. Yes. And you know, often, often I've heard you know, through trials, through persecution, your faith is tested. However, I would say your faith is revealed. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right? right. More than tested. Yeah. Because it's simply showing what has been there Absolutely. all along. Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Right. And just, uh, you know, the, to highlight uh, Tuesday's lesson, uh, it's, it's called an axe a lot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to highlight, though, that it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. That was giving them power to endure that. Yes. And we just want to remind people that, right? That sometimes we, 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 put, we can put emphasis on the biblical characters, but it's really the power of God using them. Mm -hmm. And it's the same power that can use us today. I, I, you mentioned something that is very important, I think. Uh, and thank you for bringing that back up because yeah. it is the Holy Spirit. Right. You're right. 
no matter how much you can talk about it, how much it is only the Holy Spirit is going to give you the power right. to be able to continue to continue to press forth in spite of the circumstances. So, yeah, it's yeah. important that we remind, remember that. Yeah. To amplify something you said, Pastor Diego, it, it is to my mind too late to find God in the storm. Mm. You know, you got to walk that path to God mm, yes. during right. a sunshiny day yeah. so that when a storm comes and you have no light, you're going by memory. You right. know, I've, I know this path. I, right. I, I know how to get to God, even if the pastor can't go with me or mm. my wife can't go with me or my husband can't go with me or an elder can't go with me. I know how to get to the Lord for myself because I've done this every day of my life mm. so that when a storm comes, you don't find your faith. Right. It just reveals the faith that you already have. Uh, Amen. And, and you need that because I, I was saying in, in worship just yesterday, everybody's going to be tested. And mm. if you haven't been tested, keep on living. It's coming. <laughs> you you know, you, it's, nobody gets a pass. Yes. Everybody gets a turn. Yeah. So your faith is going to be tested. And it's going to be tested at the area that you're the weakest at. Because the devil is many things. He, forgive my pejorative English, ain't stupid. Yeah. Right. He knows your strengths. He knows your weaknesses. He knows how to push. You know, someone said to me years ago, you know, she just pushes my buttons. She just pushes my buttons. I said, well, the Lord is trying to tell you, you got to get rid of those buttons. You know? <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> it's, just, right. <laughs> it's just time to grow a little bit right. and get rid of those buttons. But if, if the Lord knows your buttons and you know your buttons, you don't think Satan knows your buttons? Of course, of course he knows yes, your buttons. Yeah, so he's yeah. going to push you at the area of your weakness. So that's why you've got to surrender all to the Lord. Amen. Because yeah. you are defeated before you begin yep. if you don't have the Lord on your side. That's right. Amen. Wow. Anything else that jumps out at either of you on Tuesday before we move over uh, to uh, on Wednesday, to Wednesday? Nope. Well, let's no, go, let's, let's continue, go on over. Caring for the community. This is an interesting concept, Pastor, you know, the mm -hmm. caring for the community. Um, you know, I, and I think, of course, back to back, it goes back to Acts. And that, that care that they had, it, it really brought their experience of unselfishness, mm -hmm. of, of really being interested in the well-being of somebody else, you know? Right. Uh, this is what allowed them, uh, verse 42 of, of Acts 2, 42, it says, and they continued steadfastly in the, in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. So they, like, they had this community where they really care for one another. Yeah. They care for their needs, the spiritual, of course, and physical needs. There was not this selfish attitude anymore. There was not this desire to, you know, to show who has a better income or whatnot. It was really the love for souls that we talked at the beginning that really motivated the church to be one. What an experience to the world to see a community of believers in that way. And I think that it's sort of like what God wants us today to, through the help of the Holy Spirit, as you mentioned, Pastor Diego, you know, to be able to start be developing this love, this care for one another. Mm. And this will surely take us into an experience that we will have what heaven really is going to be like right. here on earth. Right, absolutely. And, you know, it's, I, back to my, my childhood. <laughs> Good. I would always wonder, you know, I would always see people, I, I'm from the city, grew up in the city. I would always see, non-Christians doing good things, mm. right? And that would always kind of almost confuse me a bit because it was almost like, well, what makes us different? Right. Right. And I think, again, back to the book of Acts, we're seeing that it wasn't just the good works, but it was the power, mm. Mm -hmm. right? Because we see that Paul, Peter, and, and you know, et cetera, were healing. Mm -hmm. they, were, they, were, they were going into places, preaching the gospel. They would be shipwrecked but they were healing and blessed in. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's possible to do ministry without the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. yes. And that's dangerous, right? Yes. right? It's dangerous to get into that and not even realize that I'm simply doing good works mm -hmm. without the power. So, you know, this, this lesson in Wednesday just made me, it made me come back to we need to be praying Amen. and asking God to give us not only good works, but the power of God. Absolutely. Ah, Amen. Those good works. <laughs> to attend those good works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, I'll give you a pragmatic example. We had a, a person uh, attend our recent anchor school mm. who was really sold on the doctrines of Adventism. She had no fault with them. She had no problem with them. Um, 
But the other truth is that people don't join the church anymore simply because you say we got the truth. Absolutely. We're the remnant. Right. You know, first of all, those are ag Adventist jargon that most folks yeah. don't understand. And secondly, it's not enough. That may get them interested or started. But I was told that um, Jeannie Wheaton attended her the first Sabbath she stepped into an Adventist church. <laughs> she said the people loved her. They had fellowship yeah. lunch with her. They, they her came needs. up and greeted her. Mm -hmm. they, they treated her as one of them. Mm. Well, she's in, gentlemen. She's locked in. Praise the Lord. She believes the doctrine, and now she's got a fellowship that she loves. Yes. So she's in. You know, Praise it's, it's, the Lord. She has said, some of the, are you Adventist? She said, not yet. <laughs> you know, so she, she's telling you, I'm coming. You I'm know? coming. Why is she coming? Because we said, we're the truth. We got the truth. We're the remnant church. No, 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 no. Because she found a doctrinal premise that she could follow, yes. backed up by some people who put flesh on that, who yeah. touched her, who loved her. Yeah. And, and that, that combination is, is unbeatable, mm. you know, yeah. to the, the caring for the community, to caring for those who love you, Amen. who, who want right. to be loved by you, is, is a winning combination. Absolutely. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Anything else jump out, jump out at you before we move to Thursday because our time is going to get away from us? No, I think. Um, the legacy of, of love. Uh, John 13, 35, you, you know it, I, I'll make you read it, but I know you know it. Yeah. <laughs> it says here, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have loved one to another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what a lesson, what a experience, as we mentioned, is not what you say, right. it's what you show. Right. It's easier mm -hmm. to speak about Christ, but a lot harder to live. Christ in you. So Christ wants us to have the love. And as, as I think is important, we have seen the lesson, it's really, if you come to Christ in prayer, if you ask for the Holy Spirit to come to you, to, to transform you, to have that daily renew of your heart, where you can truly have the love of God to show the love to your fellow men. And it's not just to love, you know, your friends. Mm. It's not just to love those that you like, because it's, it's, that's easy. Yeah. It's to love those that don't like you, right. that speak bad about you, yes. speak, you know, those that you don't feel comfortable with. Right. And, 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 you know, I, I believe that the key for our success, you know, it's in this experience. Yeah. If we love the Lord, we ask the Holy Spirit, we will have that, that love for one another. And that's the community that God yeah. wants us to have. Yeah, you said something that, I, 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 that hit me. You said, it's not to love those that you like. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Not just those who love you back, yeah. but that you are comfortable with, yeah. but love those that maybe you're a little less comfortable with, who yeah. don't look like you, don't talk like you, mm -hmm. but are children of God and men and women, boys and girls that Christ died for. Pastor Diego, anything to add to that? I, I, I want to highlight the, the, the phrase that Jesus says to love one another. Uh, because I think, you know, if you can't love your church members, Mm -hmm. If you can't love your family in-house, in yeah. context, Jesus is speaking to his mm. disciples, then you, how are you going to love those that you are evangelizing to? That's right. And this, this really becomes the root and the pulse of ministry, is that we don't, like, like, like Pastor said, we don't just, you know, we're not just doing good works, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, we, we, we want the power that, that gives good works. Mm -hmm. And so that, that is the, the only way, I think, through the Holy Spirit, that we can actually love mm -hmm. the way God loves. That's right. Right, because as as we know, love is has become very tinted today. They're calling many things love, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says that God is love, mm -hmm. yeah. and if God is love, then everything that God says is love. Amen. And so it, it's this idea that we have to start first by loving our families, our church members, even those that you know make make us angry. <laughs> For we can get together and, and do the work for those that we don't even know. Right. Is, you know, something, back to the, the title of the lesson, you know, the, yeah. central, the central issue, love or selfishness. Mm. And it's truly, this is the, the, you know, where we have to decide what side we're going to be or, yeah. or how, you know, we allow it. We, we allow the Lord to come into my heart so that I can actually have love, mm. genuine love, the love of Christ for others the love that we mentioned at the beginning for souls that we desperately need and we don't have yet sometimes, you know? And I believe that, you know, if we don't do that, what will happen instead or what we'll have instead is selfishness at the end of the day. Yes. Yes. It's gonna be love for me and me alone, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you like me because 
I feel your, you know, your, your love, support, whatever, then I like you. But it's really a selfish love. Right. God wants us to get rid of that. And the key is Christ in us, the hope yeah. of glory, you know? Yes. During every hour of Christ's sojourn upon the earth, the love of God was flowing from him in mm -hmm. irrepressible streams. All who are imbued with his spirit will love as he loved. Mm -hmm. The very principle that actuated Christ will actuate them in all their dealing with one another. The lesson on Thursday gives uh, the response of Christians to two pandemics. Yeah. Mm. One that took place in AD 160 <laughs> and another that took place in AD 260, which is very interesting because uh, it says Dion Dionysius wrote a very lengthy tribute to what these Christians mm. were doing. He was mm. praising the tribute. But it occurred to me, 160, 260, these happened before 303 to 313, yeah. which was the Diocletian persecution, mm. the worst persecutions yeah. in the history of the Roman Empire. Which says to me that every time you do good, you're not always going to get praise for it. Right. You know, yeah. sometimes your goodness is going to be rejected. Yeah. Sometimes your goodness is going to be evil spoken of. Sometimes it's going to be uh, looked at you, looked at with a jauntist eye. Mm -hmm. But you do it because doing good is what good people do. Amen. Right? Is what Christians do. That's right. So you're not doing it to get the praise of men. That's not important. You're doing it because God has asked you to do it and you're trying to be like Christ. Any thoughts Amen. on that? Well, you know, I was, I was just thinking, you know, this is history speaking of Christians stepping up in a moment of pandemic, you know, twice within 100 years. The Christians were known to be people that cared, that mm -hmm. were ready to give and to share. And if you are, you know, in a famine, a pandemic, whatever, you know, you're, you, you, you have little resources. So it's, it's, you have to really step out of your, you know, your own, household and give what you little you have to help others. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, um, God gave us, has given us recently a pandemic. Yeah. We, we, were we known for that? I think the answer, we all agree, is probably not the case, you know, necessarily. So what I'm saying is, we, this is a good, you know, gauge for us. Mm. We need to, to really come back to Christ, to fall in love with Jesus, allow him to come into our hearts Ask for the Holy Spirit, as we mentioned today, to really transform our minds so that we can look for ways to show love, mm -hmm. true love, the love of Christ in us, so that we can be, a, you know, a, a blessing to the, the world. Mm -hmm. Pastor, any thoughts? The question right below, talking about what is the obvious message for us here? How do we learn to die to self so that we too can manifest the same selfless spirit? Is it not easy, is it? Mm -hmm. I, I wrote down, as I was meditating upon this, just very quick, I think understanding our natures, our understanding what happened, yeah. as, as we say in Genesis, understanding why it happened, and understanding what Jesus has done. Mm. And I think once we see the full picture of, of what Christ has done and what he continues to do, it would, it would bring a, a, a natural want Mm -hmm. to want to love like Christ, to want to walk like Christ. And this will always uh, lead to persecution. Amen. Because Satan mm -hmm. is not in the business of yeah. being nice, <laughs> just to put it that way. <laughs> uh, he, he's, he's a destroyer. He's the father of lies. Mm -hmm. But you know, the Lord said, blessed are ye when you're persecuted. Right. For yeah. my name's sake, obviously, yeah. for the right yeah. reason, yeah. not for yeah. anything. But And this is the thing. I think God is telling us, you know, yes, loving True love will raise up opposition. People that are not gonna are gonna try to destroy you because it talks, you know, against to who they are really. Mm -hmm. But in spite of that, we are to continue and we need to press forth, showing the love of God mm -hmm. to others. Mm -hmm. right. John sixteen thirty three tells us that in the world you shall have tribulation. You're not gonna get a pass on that. Mm -hmm. But be of good cheer, for Christ has overcome the world. And I think we need Amen. to hold on to that in good times and in bad, in happy and in sad happy and or sad, we know that Christ is with us, we are not alone, mm. and that ultimately we will be victorious in Jesus Christ. Mm. We hope that this lesson has been a blessing to you. Our time has fast slipped into eternity. Allow me in closing to wish you now grace and peace through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye, and God bless. Mm.